Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our episode on Iqra about youth issues, and we're joined with Hisham and Omer. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. Wa alaikum salam. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. Not like other topics are not interesting, actually. Every topic that we spoke in these shows are just amazing. We had some amazing discussions, and I kind of picked your brains on most of these topics. Now, we're kind of, again, moving down the line with our show, and we're talking about the issue of freedom. What is freedom? Let me start. What does freedom mean to you? You do what you want, you say what you want, you feel what you want, you think what you want. Like everything, you can do it whenever you want. Okay, Hisham? Yeah, same thing. You, you're free to do anything you want. And, you know, no one's there to tell you, Nothing is don't bad do this. To you. Everything you choose no one's is telling you, No one's telling you to stop. Now, is there such a thing as ultimate freedom? Like, rationally speaking, is there such a thing as no. ultimate freedom? No. If there was something as ultimate freedom, there would be some people they want to kill. It's crazy. And there's some true. people want to steal. That's true. Some people want to rob. Some people want to smash and drive cars fast. That would be freedom. The world would be chaos. Okay. Because freedom is, has a different... Everyone thinks freedom is peace. But if you think about it, if the world had like ultimate freedom, the world would be in chaos. Okay. And if, if it actually was ultimate, if there really was complete freedom to do anything you want, you can't do that because this world has limits. Everything has limits. There's laws for everything. Just not it's not just like a laws of a country. Like, if I drop something, it has to go downwards. Like okay, that. Like everything laws of the universe. Has exactly. Everything has some kind of has laws limits. that they have to stick to. Like that. Every human being has their own limits. So there's no ultimate freedom. It's not like you can fly definitely anytime. Okay. So it's, it's not possible that everyone can just. Not that you can just hop on the highway and go 200 kilometers an hour. You know. There's, yeah, exactly. There's you know there's any, this this will be considered freedom. You can do whatever you want as 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 uh, you guys say. Now what about within an Islamic concept because now again we're going to go back to the issues of the youth right because a lot of people they look at Islam and they say like Man, too many limits there's too many limits right isn't it is, do, do kids say that do youth a say that a lot of people okay they say like, everything that's good is haram everything that's good is haram too no. much haram too much yeah I wonder, who says any what's good anyway I mean how, how come they say everything that's good is haram because it's good as in most of the bad things are haram but to them it's the good thing they feel good huh? yeah they feel good Dancing, listening to music, drinking, sometimes even drugs, having relationships. It's like fun or good, yeah, yeah. but it's hard. But if you think about it, think of all the things you can do. Sports. Every, think of all the halal all things. All the halal things you can do. Outnumbers the haram things by, by so many. hundreds. But it, it seems, and this is a very good point, it seems that we tend to highlight the haram things. Yeah. It's, like, it's like there's like, you know, these five or ten things that are so prevalent in our culture and our society. but it happens that they're haram. Yeah. And because we discuss about them, you know, we always talk about, you know, you know, relationships and drugs and alcohol and music and things are movies, these kind of things that are around and people are doing so much, right, around us. And we tend to think like, you know, just because it comes so often that we talk about, oh, everything's haram, you know, like yeah. Islam says everything's haram. But is that the case? I mean, what's the concept? No, I mean, there's a reason for every single limit. For example, I'll give you from a scientific perspective, if you eat a lot of chocolate, it may seem really good, but actually it's bad Taste for you. I like chocolate. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, it, it may taste really good but if you eat a lot of chocolate, but it's not going to be good for your health. As it says in the Quran, If you, what, what happens That's is, right. if you like something and it's bad for you, or if you hate something and it's good for you, might, it, might it could be, good be, for yeah, you. might be good for you. That's the same in real life. You don't like to, you know, sit and some people don't like to pray, some people don't like to pray, but actually it's good for you. Some people don't like eating vegetables, but actually that's good for you too. You know, it's, it's limits, right. but actually for the good of you. And sometimes, you know, as, uh, to complete the verse that you said, Allah says after that, and Allah knows, and you don't. And you don't know. Exactly. And you don't know. Subhanallah. For everything He prohibited, there's a secret, there's a bad thing in it. Everyone says, why is this harm? There's nothing bad in it, nothing will like... But if you look at relationships, have you ever seen a successful relationship? I've never seen. Uh, there's either uh, breakups, Heartbroken, ends up with AIDS, diseases. Yeah. I'm serious. Abuses that yeah. we talked about. And uh, <laughs> you say, you think dancing. You think it's no, but picture it, okay? If someone comes here, starts shaking his body, you say this guy is mental. Guy by, is by the way, I used to be a break dancer. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious though. If you think about it, what is he's. Really, I'm not joking. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, like, 
dancing has a bad effect too. Shaking your booty in weird uh, ways. Right. It's provoking it's, yeah, desires exactly. in your know, Especially in case Drinking of causes death sometimes. Drinking, uh, becoming drunk. AIDS and STDs all added together, drinking causes more death than that. That's true. Now, um, going back to the concept of, uh, you know, with the Muslim youth, Islamic freedom, because as you said, you know, Muslim youth are saying, you know, everything that is, uh, you know, fun and good, it's, it's becomes haram, haram yeah. you know, right? No, I mean, can Islam and freedom coexist, or how, how do we put the two together? I mean, can, can of course it can, yeah. Islam is a balanced religion. It's a way of life that is so balanced. If you live it properly, if you adhere to Islam properly, you'll have the best life. You will feel so happy, so serene, so content with your life. You'll be balanced in every aspect of life. You can do your studies well. You can get a good job. You can have you know, a family. You can do sports. You can do all sorts of fun things. And at the same time, you'll have the inner peace. You know. You and Allah have your own time when you pray your salah and you give zakah, you feel content. Hmm. You can do so many good things. You know, you give charity, the, the inner contentment when you people do these things is just, you know, it's amazing. Now, what do you say to, st for example, some of my students, sometimes they, they said uh, things along the lines as, well, you know, um, Islam, I mean, yeah, I like it, but I, I want to be free, you know, like, I, I don't just, again, restrictions. Yeah, I don't want all these restrictions, you know, I just want to be free. I just want to do what, what I want to do, you know, yes, I like, or even sometimes non-Muslims coming and saying, I like Islam, like, I, I believe Islam is the truth. Yeah, Tawheed, and yes, Jesus is not God, and all these things, or something like that. But and, I want to live my But I want life. to, you know, live life the way I want to. What do you say to people like that? What do you guys think? I think they're selfish. Okay. Like, they want to have their free, they want to have everything for themselves. They know there should be limits. For everything, there's limits. If you think about it, every good thing, there's limits. Studying, there's limits. True. It's everything that has, it has limits. So you can't say, I want freedom, because everything has its limits. And there's nothing that doesn't have so a I limit. So I mean, by definition, freedom is not uh, absolute. Yeah, you can't have absolute freedom. I mean, if there was ultimate freedom, there would be no rules, no laws of physics. This chair would be floating up, down, right. side to side. I can do anything. But just I want. within societal, I mean, within our society. I mean, when people come to me and say like, "Oh man, you know, I like Islam again, you know, but I don't want to be a Muslim because too many rules." I tell them, "Yani, listen, <laughs> brother. Even though, you, okay, you don't like, you know, you like Islam and you don't want to commit to these rules, but without even knowing, unwillingly, you have to commit to rules, whether you like it or not." Yeah. So this is just an excuse I find sometimes to, in people, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Islam has too many rules. Because if you go, you know, can you go and, for example, you know, do whatever you want on the street? No. Can you go and punch someone on the street? No. Can you speed on the highway? No. no. Can you smoke and buy cigarettes whenever you want? No. Can you do, what, you know, basically, can you go and, uh, and put a leash on, on, uh, on uh, you know, uh, like someone else's dog and take him as your own or something or steal someone's car or things like that? No. Can you go and slap your dad? <laughs> Some people do. <laughs> You know, but it's, it's right no. Back. Can you go and take the gun from a police officer or something like that? Yeah, exactly. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, no, right? There's limits, everything. And when, when people come and tell me, you know, I want to be free, Islam is too restrictive. Once my friend told me, and I just sat him down and I told him, you're an employee, for example, at an office. Right. Don't you have a certain dress code, a certain way you should talk to your employees? Yeah. So why do you adhere to that, but you can't adhere to this? Right. He said, those rules of my dress code are for the benefit of myself. Right, exactly. I said, what about Islam? <laughs> just because Islam tells you to be kind it. to elders, just because it tells you to give charity, just because it tells you to have a balance in your life in spiritual and physical needs, so. just because of that, you don't want it? Hmm. it? It's your benefit. Believe me, you know, when you come to Islam, you feel such amazing inner peace, and all these limits have a reason. SubhanAllah. And I find, uh, you know, you guys agree with me, but I find like a double standard almost in people, you know, right? As I said, like some kind of contradiction, hypocrisy, like saying, I don't want freedom, but there, you know, but no, I don't want, I don't want uh, rules, but there's rules here. So I'll just go with these rules, you know, and kind of thing. Yeah, I don't want Islam because there's too many rules, but yet in your daily life, there's too many rules. Now, what about systems and people and, and, and ideologies which supposedly spread, you know, so-called freedom and, you know, again, we want to talk about a very interesting word and it's called democracy. 
you know, democracy, being, being you know, because th this is what democracy usually dictates, some kind of freedoms, freedoms, you know, people should be free. We hear too much on TV, on media, you know, oh, people here are freedom, freedom, people here are freedom, we want to, you know, spread democracy, we want to, democracy should reach every, now, I find, again, a double standard. For example, in, you know, the, 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 the ideology, ideology of, of so-called democracy and freedom spreads to a certain country. And people are saying, but we don't want it. We're fine with what we have, right? So people are like, no, we're going to give you freedom. <laughs> we're like, what are you thinking? Like, we, don't, we have our concept of freedom, but we don't want your concept of freedom. And then people, what will do? They'll start, like, fighting them or, like, you know, occupying them and all these things. And then say, no, you don't understand. We want to give you freedom. But people are like, no, you don't understand. We don't want it. Like, we are fine the way we are. No, we have to free you. But we're like, but we're not. Yes, from from what? what? You know, exactly, yeah. right? So, I mean, I find like, uh, you know, hypocr hypocrisy. It's kind of like what I call, you know, that uh, one of the brothers called it actually, uh, and I, I like to refer to it as the golden rule. What's the golden rule? You guys know? No. No. no? You know, most people write to say that golden rule is, you know, don't, don't do unto others what you don't like to be okay, done to yeah, you, yeah. right? All right? Or do unto others that you would like to be done to yeah, yourself, yeah. right? So, but I say, you know, golden rule is, you know, basically, as the one brother put it, he said, who has the gold makes the rules. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't it? It's like, what, who defines what freedom means? Is those who are in power or those who are supposedly, you know, spreading their ideology of what their concept of freedom is, right? They're globalizing. They go their globalization. Idea. They say, you know, here's globalization. Here's democracy. Take it, you know, swallow it. We'll stick it down your throat if you don't like it. You know, and kind of like, we don't, you know, so you know what I mean? Like, I find a double standard. I mean, you're saying, free okay, if you like freedom, then give me the freedom to do what I choose to do, right? Within, within these limits, you know? For, for example, if someone says, no, you know, we need to change, for example, Islam. You know, we don't like these things about Islam, uh, you know, so we're going to bring you freedom. But like, hold on a second. Yani, by your definition, you should give me the freedom to practice yeah. my Islam that exactly. I like. Yeah. You know? So do you see the, the contradiction and the, yeah, and the, and the double standards? Another thing is that people can follow rules on the road. They can follow rules in their office, in their work. But when it comes to Islam, they don't want to follow rules. It's like when your mother tells you to eat your food, you eat your food. When your, mo when your mother tells you don't play PS2, you still play PS2. You only listen to what you want. Yeah, what you, you pick and choose. Pick and choose right. what you want. And this is it. a big problem, right? yeah. pick and choosing, you know. Um, now, speaking about divine rules, divine freedoms versus human freedom, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, within Islam, you know, and people might think, oh, there's no freedom in Islam. There is freedom. There's freedom to do many things. However, there's fine, defined lines as to where the freedom, to what point can freedom can extend, right? And this is what we tell people, you're like, oh, you guys are not free. Who said that? We are free. You know, look at us. We're free. Alhamdulillah. We're free to practice. We're free to do, you know. Do but you there's, want. listen, you can, you're free up to this Certain extent. Limit, you're course. free up to, you can go up to. There's lots of, you know, leeway in between, but there is restrictions. Now, people call for ultimate freedom. It means like, as you said, you know, what, what is it? Be free to kill, be free to do whatever you want. No, this is even rationally from a point of view, removing faith out of it, removing supposedly religion or this kind of, you know. Even from a rational point of view, it doesn't make sense, ultimate freedom, you know, people screaming always, freedom, freedom, freedom. Yeah. But they don't understand what it really means. What I found, uh, you know, that sometimes, especially in our Muslim youth and some of the students that we used to, uh, this, I used to discuss with, people were coming to say, like, why, you know, why do I have to put hijab on? Some of the sisters would come. And I would say to them, well, why not? You know, Allah tells you in the Quran, it's, it's an order from Allah. You are a Muslim. You believe in Islam. It's to protect yourself. And, for, you know, let me, what, what is the real source of your problem? And then we'll get down there. I want to look beautiful. And I want to be, you know, with this guy. Like, you know, at least I have nice hair or something. So in the end, I discovered that what do people want? Freedom. Freedom to commit sins. Exactly. Right? Like people just want to be free to do whatever they want. And specifically when Islam just... Freedom to commit sins, okay? Just freedom to, be, to do bad things. To do bad things sometimes, and, you know? And we spoke about it in, a few pre in the previous, a few previous episodes ago. We said that 
the first part of sexual harassment is the provocative, right. you know, the provocative behavior, pro provocative clothing that they wear. You know, free to wear whatever they want. Exactly. You know, right? you and then if someone does something to her, they're like, oh, oh yeah, exactly. you are a, you know, a pig yeah. or something. You know? yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Sometimes you know, people. Why do you blame women. them? Blame yourself as well. First of all, exactly. You should you know, blame yourself as to you know, what kind of freedom are you exercising. Now, uh, an interesting thing that I wanted to, to, to talk about is the issue of changing Islam because of these freedoms. People want to change Islam. And specifically, for example, the issue of uh, riba. And I just want to, you know, kind of talk a little bit about this interest, you know? People say, you know, we should have the freedom to, you know, uh, you know, pursue interest, interest meaning in, in interest, you know, in, banking, in banking and, you know, this, this is part of freedom, right? But again, you look now at the situation of the world in terms of financial, you know, Christ. this is a law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He forbade riba. But people say, are you free to take whatever you want, do whatever you want? But this was forbidden for, not just to the Muslim people think that, oh, we're Christians, you guys are Muslim, okay, you guys, you know, you're too restricted, you cannot take interest, blah, blah, blah. too bad on you, you know, you're not going to buy that nice car, you know, and I can just go and take a, a, you know, a interest, you know, a loan from the bank. But this was forbidden to the Christians and the Jews. It's in the Bible that it was not allowed. But people, what have they done because of they their so-called the freedom? They've changed it. They've changed it and said, no, no, no. You know, it's our freedom, you know, freedom, freedom. Under the pretext that, you know, too many rules, too many rules, too many rules, the religion can change. Exactly. Alcohol is prohibited and they changed it because right. everyone wanted it. Right. And, um, and well, they changed it. They, they yeah. allowed it after. I mean, you know, in terms of interest, as you were saying, my dad's an Islamic banker. So I follow these things. And right now, the whole capital banking system has gone crashed everywhere. Oh. And if we see, I'll just give you the example of the United Arab Emirates. There's so many commercial banks, Mushrik Bank, Rack Bank. And these banks, now each of them have an Islamic banking section in their section, bank right. they, to they, come they back up. It, to, to pull it back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah the Mushrik Bank of, you know, Sadiq, Abu Dhar Islamic Bank. You know, each bank is no, starting an Islamic banking section because this Islamic it's banking, yeah, <laughs> it's actually pretty good. It's not pretty good. It's, it's the, the best. best. It's the way, <laughs> it's the, like you know, in interest actually, you know, makes, is the main source of income for every bank. Huh. They, they need interest, you know, their main profit, they earn millions from interest. Huh. And this money, as we said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ riba. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a hikmah behind everything, there's, there's a reason behind every rule. So now if you see the economic downturn of every single, you know, the euro is going down, the, the market in every single country is going down, there's obviously a reason behind it. Right. And all the banks are going down in America, the banks aren't able to leverage, you know, the, the economic system. So there's a reason for every rule. That's the main point. Right, so that's and why there's these limitations. These poor, yeah, you see all these poor countries, why are they poor? Because of riba. America... Hey, uh, lend you some because of the yeah. freedom of other countries. Exactly. You know, yes. to be really, to pull countries, it down to. they said, help us, we need money. We said, okay, but you give us back this much, and if you're late, and we add more extra, and more. And now every year, they, try, they, they work so hard. You see, all these Nike shoes, this brand, you must think, oh man, th these, uh, uh, these best countries, UK, America, must make these. So he has the freedom to, exactly. to, to basically anyone. enslave almost, you know, yeah. modern day slavery these children, you know, exercise, oh, maybe start my freedom, you know, right? So Islam puts limitations on the so-called freedom. So this is, you know, I think the, the undermining, uh, you know, topic that we're in. The there's issue a we're reason discussing. behind everything. And there's a reason behind everything. There's so freedom is not absolute, yani, bottom line. So, Inshallah, we'll be back with you in a few minutes. Inshallah, here on Iqra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A little bird. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We're talking about freedom. Freedom within the Muslim society, within the, uh, you know, the concept of freedom in Muslim youth today, and how people use it to pretty much persuade and uh, follow their desires, and uh, sometimes, you know, leading them into changing the deen, changing Islam, and just following their, their own ways. Now, I wanted to wrap up this episode with mentioning two issues. Number one, the concept of hijab. The concept of hijab in Islam, many times, you know, sisters and, you know, different people will look at the Muslims, uh, the sisters come as Muslims, they say, why do I have to wear hijab? Non-Muslims will look at Muslims, uh, women will say, why do we Muslim women have to cover? Why do they have to, you know, wear this, uh, you know, cover and not just show their bodies or just go and dress, dress whatever they want? And we always give them the same answers, you know, from a point of 
from a freedom point of view, that God has sent some limitations because God knows best as to how and what people do and how they react to things. So the concept of hijab, we always used to tell people, you know, a Muslim woman covers in such a way to protect herself, to protect herself from uh, the, you know, different vices of society and people objectifying her and so on and so forth. I want to mention to you a research that has been conducted by Princeton University. Princeton University conducted a research where they put males on a brain scan to see what happens when they show pictures of women reveal, wearing revealing clothing. And they discovered that the same part of the brain lights up in this, all the subjects. It's always the same part of the brain. It was a part of the brain that is associated with tool use. Tool use, yes, such as screwdrivers and different kind of things, right? Now, what does that mean? Basically, the study conducted concluded that when males are shown pictures of women wearing revealing clothes or not being covered, the part of the brain that looks at things that are subhuman lights up. What does that mean? Is that part is active. So again, when males would see these pictures of women not covered properly, they would basically look at them as objects, as tools. This is Princeton University research. So now we see the wisdom behind the limitations on freedoms that Islam puts. Second point that I wanted to talk about is the concept of freedom. Freedom to express, you know, your opinion on every single aspect. You know, and double standards. One of the very things that is happening today is the Occupy pro protests that are going into, you know, in, in the world. Occupy, you know, Toronto. Occupy, um, you know, different cities throughout the U.S. And we find people dictating to others that you should have more freedom. You should go and, you know, allow protests to take place and freedom this, freedom that, selling freedoms. However, the double standard comes when you see these Occupy protests in the United States and throughout Europe and so on and so forth and people are being arrested for just exercising this so-called freedom. So you're exercising your freedom in a country that calls you to be free, yet you're being arrested. Just to highlight the double standard. So in the end, brothers and sisters, Muslim youth, freedom is not absolute. You cannot go on the highway and just speed 250 kilometers an hour. You cannot just go on the street and punch anyone. There's rules and regulations in everything we do in our lives. And we need to look at the wisdom of these rules and regulations and without a doubt we'll find that Islam offers the best rules and regulations to mold and to guide our daily life. This is Jibril K. You're watching Iqra. Inshallah, we'll see you next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.